There's no book on, on what I do. The danger is that there is a book on directing. There is no book on directing. There is no book on talking, how you talk and how you deal with actors. I think you find your own way and you find your own way by doing it as often as possible. Sun's warm. Nice day, I fancy. My art school was very, very good. It was the Royal College of Art. They had a bollocks in the cupboard. And I said to the guy who ran the department, can I have the bollocks for the first month of the summer? And I went up north to fundamentally disrupt and ruin my brother's summer holiday because I'd haul him out of bed saying, you're it, you're on, you're the actor, and you're going to help me carry equipment. And that guy was Tony Scott. We were both experiencing the process that would fundamentally take us through our life together in terms of making movies. I'm examining. I was 38 and I'd written three screenplays by now and I never managed to get them going so I began to think it was me. I found this thing which is Joseph Conrad called The Duelists. It was a sketch from a much thicker, big book on the, the Russian war. And from that I got my first script. No one wanted it. Those days they didn't want to do period and the guys I'd cast were Michael York and, and Oliver Reed. And the studio said, nope, that won't fly. They gave me a list, and I, it was like a hit list, and I said, okay, Harvey Keitel and Keith Carradine. So I said, okay. So I went out and I got him. <laughs> Don't moan when you ain't got your first film going, dude. My first film cost me money. Tight. An obsession to kill. No apology. I was a pretty good designer, I think, and um, I was reading the script of The Alien, and thinking, it's Mobius. I'm going to make it gnarly and grungy, and I'm going to get the uniforms just a certain way, the space costume. So he designed the space outfits and the uniforms. He, he designed the suits. I was really leveraging myself in that as a, very much as a production designer, because I knew exactly what to do. And if I had Giga, I would have the monster. Without the monster, I wouldn't have had a film. And the beast was probably the best beast ever, I think. There was a gasp of horror and somebody ran, jumped up and ran out of the theatre. If that's what you're doing, that's what you're doing, you know? That was a rare experience and uh, we got it right. Pull that one off. I think the best scene probably would be the scene between him and Roy Batty where you hunt, seek and find, not because of the violence, but because you're in a very unusual situation of a hero like Harrison Ford being afraid of this nutcase who actually had the right to vengeance. And at the end of it, he said, time to die. At that evening, I was being closed down. And uh, I didn't care, though, because I got it. I really knew I had it. I was asked to go around to, to uh, Roy Batty's trailer because he'd written something. So I thought, oh, no. And so he's written, rewritten some lines. And what had happened, Rutger had written, I've seen things you people wouldn't believe. And then he resumed the script. The reason it's time to die and die. By being confident that I know exactly what I'm doing, I can afford to shift gear. Somebody can always come up with something that you hadn't thought of. It's probably one of my best experiences. Magic, pure magic. I'll have a wild turkey straight up and a coke bag, please. It's Colin Curry's script. And Cali is like pretty forceful. So I sat down for days with her and I said, I think you should make this more comedy with a odyssey as a journey and a tragic, and not a tragic ending, an ending which is appropriate, which can be the only ending for these two. If I'd played Thelma as a serious documentary drama, I think most guys would refuse to go and see it because it was kind of amusing, everyone saw it. So that's, I, I wanted to get it out there. It's about women getting there, being heard, and being taken seriously. I tried five directors and all of them said, I've got a problem with the women. I said, well, that's the whole problem, dude. I met an actress one day, Michelle Pfeiffer, who was busy at the time, said, I can't do it, but I really like the script. She said, why don't you come to your senses and you do it? So that's the one I t went, uh, yeah, maybe I should, and I did, that's what happened. I was the best because the crowd loved me. 
Well, Ollie died the very best possible way. He had seven pints of beer on Sunday morning in a pub in Malta, sat in the cop and said, I don't feel too good, drained it, and keeled over and died. I think that's pretty good. I can think of much worse ways of dying. We then had to add some takes of Oliver shouting to Russell in the tunnel up into to the arena. Shadows and dust, Maximus! When Ollie had to come across and say something to let him out, we somehow cobbled together the same head on a double's body saying the, those words which made sense at the time. That is not. The real miracle of the film was when they come out the ground in the arena, I said, right, I built 40% of the Colosseum. When they come out, I want to go right around, I want to see the whole goddamn arena and the entire 20, 30, 40,000 people. That's the first major shot I've ever seen that happen. But they just track us and they come up, go right around, come back and continue the scene. That was a company, very good English company. Got an Academy Award for that. He's 50 million miles away from home. I never carry a script on set. Because I prepared the film in my head by storyboarding everything, I filmed it on paper. So by the time I get there, I know exactly what I'm going to do. And the script was very great script adaptation from the book by Drew. And they just retained the humor. As I said, this is a comedy. And they said, well, kind of. You don't want to make it too much of a drama. I think there's a lot of potential humor in that and how he survives, how he works out to how to eat. There's nothing funnier than that, growing potatoes. And all of it works. All of it is actually scientifically valid. When I look I at the, the way things landed, which was Harvey first and then Kevin, I knew this was going to be a major perch. I thought that this will put our film Business. and its investment away. We'll just simply end up not running it. I cannot have that happening to my partner. I flew to New York. That evening met with Christopher. Flew back that night, landed in Burbank. On the way at the office, we decide to completely start all over again, and I will have it out by the same planned day. Because I know I can do that. I'm really good with budgets. I'm very good organizationally, because I know what I want. Just sheer experience. I said, right, we're going to just do it, OK? He said, but I'm, I guarantee you what you'll do will be worthwhile. There's nothing more boring to an actor who's a good one than you telling about the meaning of life before you do a take. Never do that. Keep it simple. <laughs> uh, I didn't want to go back to Wadi Rum, but I got plates of that. So I'd take the shot of where all the Arabs are standing, waiting for the train to pull in. Now I took the reverse angle of all the desert. I could set up a green screen at this house in Buckinghamshire, this vast stately, stately home. And I shot the green screen there and then just popped it in. Save your money, dude. I have no money to spare. I'm doing all right, you know, and uh, I'm just really pleased I'm still allowed to do it and keep going.